what's the off season like for you? I know this is a chance for you to unwind, spend some time with the family, but of course also keeping your body right, getting ready. How do you find that balance of, of doing a little bit of both before the season starts? Right, so uh, I've been very fortunate to where um, you know, I live on a, I live pretty close to my high, high school actually that I went to uh, growing up. So uh, they let me use their gym and weight room whenever I like. And so, um, so I'm able to stay in shape that way. But no, right after the season, I go home and, and you know, Again, I live like 10 minutes from both my sister and my parents, so I spend as much family time as I can, and, and uh, you know, it's just, yeah, like you said, trying to find that balance between staying in shape and enjoying your summer. When it comes to actually working on basketball before the season starts, are you someone that likes to work on specific skill sets before the next season, like, oh, I want to work on my ball handling or my shooting, or is it something that you just want to stay active and kind of just keep the basketball motion going until the season begins? So up until about... I'd say probably July. It's just kind of keep your body in shape, keep you know, you know, keep the normal basketball skills going, you know, just basic stuff. And then I think cl after July, after July first, then you start honing in on. Like for me, um, what I'm excited about is this fan base and this team didn't even get to see it yet. Um, you know, from a playmaking perspective, you know, ball handling, even shooting a little bit. You know, I've got um, a whole bag of tricks that they didn't even get to see. So. I'm excited to bring you know bring that out this season and, and, and show there's a whole lot more to my game than, than people have seen here. We're excited to see that as well from you. Um, this is draft night. A first, you were a first round pick from the Los Angeles area. What do you remember most about that night? Your name being called, especially going to a franchise like the Lakers. What sticks out to you about that night? Um, it's it's so tough because you know you hear your name called and it's obviously like the end of a super long journey to get here. But, you know, everything that you've built to that point stops and it just gets erased. Now you have to build it back up from, from scratch. So um, it's the end of a, of a really, really long journey. Um, it's a very rewarding thing to hear your name called. But at the same time, it's a, it's a start of a brand new one and, and um, the best journey that you could hope for. Black out a little bit when your name's called, when you're making that way up there, or if you're just the fact that you're with your family. Like, was it just something you're like, Oh my gosh, this is this is really happening right now. Yeah, so I I, I was sitting at home on my parents' couch uh, when I heard my name called, and um, it was I don't remember a whole lot about it to be honest with you. It was it was uh, just the greatest feeling, um, the greatest feeling ever, and and uh, you know <laughs> I, I'm just so happy for all these kids here tonight. So speaking of the kids tonight, whether it's for the Pelicans in their eighth pick or the the second round picks, what what would your advice to be to those that are being selected tonight? Um. Enjoy the night. Uh, enjoy the night. Enjoy these next few days because I love you guys too. <laughs> um, enjoy, uh, enjoy the night. Enjoy these next few days because uh, you know you're starting off brand new. You know whatever you built in college, whatever you built in high school, uh, the G League, whatever it is, that starts. That that record is erased, and so um, you know you're here to take somebody else's job, and you know. It ain't gonna be mine, I can guarantee that. So, um, you know, you gotta work that much harder, and so it's, it's, uh, it's a grind, but enjoy tonight and uh, get ready to work. You certainly have the fans cheering your name. Obviously, you've been out and about in New Orleans. What's that experience like? Obviously, coming from Portland, you played in Cleveland, you played in Los Angeles. What's New Orleans been like for you? I know you haven't had a lot of time because you came in mid-season, but what have you liked the most about not only the city, but this fan base? You talked about what we saw in the playoffs this year. No, it's been incredible. Um, it's been incredible for me. One of the biggest, one of the coolest things this season. Um, sorry, this mic, um, <laughs> whatever that is. But the coolest things this season uh, is even Game Six. We, you know, we lost on our home court, but um, you know the fact that even with a loss, the fans, you know, gave us a standing ovation off the court. Um, you know, walking to that locker room, you wanted to drop your head and be sad that the season ended, but like. You know, when you when when we're walking through this tunnel here, and you see this entire section, even back up in this direction, standing up and cheering for us after the season we had and the run we made, um, you know, just gets you excited for the next one. So, you know, that that was uh, <laughs> that was just scratching the surface. We got so much. We got so much more ahead of us. I know the talent is just oozing from this team. Young guys, some of the veterans, but. When you talk about first being traded here, you talked about the excitement of this roster with you, CJ, Tony coming along with a team that was starting to show their potential. Even though they started off slow, you started to see what they were capable of. What were your first impressions of this team when you were, we got the call saying you were traded, knowing that you were going to be a part of this organization? Um, you know, first, 
first impression, there we go. First impression, you know, obviously I was in Chicago for, um, I had a little procedure done, but the first impression with CJ, uh, CJ actually called me right away after the first few games was like, yo, you know, we could really do this here. You know, this is, you know, this is exactly what we were looking for. And, um, you know, he told me that from, from the jump. So, um, and he's right, you know, this is one of the closest locker rooms, uh, closest group of guys I've been on, I've, I've been a part of in, in my entire life. And, and, and being on a team like this is where everybody's happy for one another and, and all working towards one common goal is, is very rare. Um, so I'm thrilled to be here. I'm gonna have you elaborate on that in just a second, but I remember once you had your surgery, you're in New Orleans and you were trying to get back on the court. You had ice on your knees still, and you were just so excited to get back to out there Coaches are telling you to get back. You know, you still have to rest, but just showing your excitement based on what this team was capable of doing. But you mentioned the locker room, and I think that's something that's so rare around the NBA, and you definitely had the experience as far as finding a team in the locker room that has so much cohesion. Did you feel that from the get-go, and just how important was that as you guys made your playoff run? Oh, it was major. It was major. You know, obviously, you know, there are ups and downs, downs in an NBA season, and for a team – you know, I, I don't know what these guys started. It was like one in twelve, or, or three and fourteen, or something like that. For, for a team to take that hit and stay stay resilient and keep fighting, you know, if the locker room wasn't strong, they would have splintered and the season would have been a waste. So, um, you know, I, I, I think you know, the locker room is just massive. You know, obviously we, we we lose game one, and you know a lot of teams would fold after that. We won game two. We lost game three. A lot of teams would fold after that. Came back and won the next game. So, um, you know, this this team certainly certainly showed resiliency and a willingness to fight. And and uh, you know that's something that um, that's something that'll be around for years to come. Starts at the top with Willie Green being a first year head coach, being able to do what he did. How does he set the tone as far as you all setting you up for success and also keeping that locker room, especially when this team was one and twelve when they started the season. Yeah, the way Willie's got a command of the locker room is incredible. Um, you know, he's just the kind of guy that you want to play hard for uh, every night. You know, he, he's, yeah, I'm sure you guys heard, saw the speech, the you got to fight speech, and, and you know, uh, seeing it on video gets you fired up. But imagine being there in person, right? Like, it was, it was incredible. And so, you know, he's just the kind of guy that, that uh, you just want to give your all for and, and you know, that's not even to mention his X's and O's. He's, he's, a, he's a brilliant basketball mind and has the staff behind him to back him. So, um, you know, I'm, uh, I, you know I, th I think the world of Willie and, and um, you know, and, uh, you know, he's, he's obviously it was just his first year. So as we grow, he's going to keep getting better and better as well. Last question for you, non-basketball related. Besides our athleticism, there is something else that we have in common, and that is both being girl dads. You have me, uh, a nine-month-old, and especially with today being the 50th anniversary of Title IX, what opportunities would you like to see for your daughter in the future, and especially with more opportunities you're seeing women in sports getting, which is kind of what your message would be to her, and kind of what are you looking forward to as the future where she can hopefully get more opportunities than you can have now? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you know, uh, for me, having a daughter is just, you know, the single greatest experience of my life. Um, you know, she's uh, just everything. Uh, yes, I'm sure you know. And, and so, you know, for her, I just want, I want her to have everything that she can possibly have and dream for. And, um, you know, I've been, I've been, you know, very vocal in my support of, you know, uh, of the W and, and, and all of women's sports. So I, I think, um, you know, I think, I think for me, this, uh, you know, the, the, the way everything's trending right now, especially, you know, the W gaining more and more attention and, and I mean, shoot, I'm a massive soccer fan. So the way, the, so the way, you know, our, our country's rallied around the women's national team has been incredible as well. So, um, yeah, I think I think we're headed in the right direction. As long as we keep headed there, um, I think as long as we keep headed there, it's going to be a great thing. Larry Nance Jr., everyone, give him a round of applause. Larry, I appreciate you spending some time with me today. Appreciate you guys having me. All right, Larry Nance Jr., everyone.